I am Dr. Alak Gopalakrishna Gokhale. I am cardiothoracic transplant and minimal access surgeon. In the next few minutes, I want to explain about heart transplantation, when we do it, how we do it, what are the precautions to be taken after that, and how long they can live. We all know heart is a very important organ in the body. It is the size of a fist located in the chest, slightly to the left side of the midline. From there, it pumps about 5 liters of blood to the whole body every minute. Now, unless the organs get this blood supply, they will not work well. But sometimes, heart can get affected with the diseases too. Instead of pumping 5 liters, the heart pump may become very weak, may pump only 1 or 2 liters of blood supply. When it does that, then patients get into what is called heart failure. What it means is, heart is not able to pump blood as per the needs of the body. It is pumping less blood supply. So when they walk for a little distance, they get breathing difficulty, they get swelling of the feet because heart is failing, and they get the palpitation. They feel their heart beating inside when they walk for a few steps. And sometimes, when it becomes really bad, they can't even lie down flat, they can't breathe well. They have to sit up, then have oxygen, or go to the hospital because the blood pressure comes down. These are all various features of heart failure. Basically, heart is a muscle pump. In every beat, for example, it fills up about 100 ml of blood. When it contracts, when it pushes blood, it pushes about 70 ml of blood out. That means, it, we call it an ejection fraction in medical terms. It is pumping out 70 percent, 60 to 70 percent of the blood that is coming inside. It is a normal ejection fraction. This muscle can get affected, can get damaged by various conditions. The commonest is coronary artery disease, otherwise called heart attacks. So you know, heart gets blood supply through three blood vessels, one on the front, one on the right side, one on the left side. Sometimes these blood vessels can get blocked with the aging phenomena or maybe related to diabetes, hypertension, smoking, high cholesterol. There are many reasons for that. The cholesterol and fat get deposited inside these blood vessels, producing narrowing of blood vessel. Sometimes it gets blocked. Then this muscle will not get blood supply. They get what is called heart attack. When this muscle dies, this part of the heart is not pumping. Similarly, this muscle can get affected with, by viral infections, sometimes because of alcohol, sometimes uh, following delivery, some people develop this called postpartum cardiomyopathy. These are all called cardiomyopathy. Many a time, we don't know the reason for it. Sometimes there can be holes in the heart which are not treated in right time, or the valve diseases. There are valves inside the heart that make sure blood goes in the right direction. These valves may start leaking, may get narrowed. In that time, heart efficiency come down. End of the day, when all these problems, whatever may be the problem, affects the heart muscle, muscle becomes weak, it cannot pump blood as much as is needed by the body. It's called heart failure. When people come with heart failure, first we try to find out what is the reason for this heart failure. It is a coronary artery disease. Can we increase the blood supply to the heart, make the heart recover? It's a valve problem. Can we treat the valve problem so that the heart function efficiency increases? Or can we give some medicines to improve the heart function? Once we try this, some of the patients improve. Some patients do not improve. Over a course of time, they become so sick, they need to get admitted to the hospital every month or every 15 days. We need to give them some medications to improve the heart function temporarily. If you leave them for a long time, they will not live for a long time. The, many of the patients with advanced heart problems, they live only for a few months. Now, do we have any options to make them uh, get normal and live a longer life? In such situations, we have one option called heart transplantation. That means we remove this damaged heart, bring a normally working heart from outside and put it there. Where do we get heart? For example, you all know about kidney transplantation. We have two kidneys. When a patient has got a kidney problem, one person relative can donate a kidney, make that person live. But heart, we have only one heart. We cannot donate the heart because the donor will die immediately. That's why legally we have what is called cadaver heart donation. That means when a person is dead practically, heart is beating but brain is damaged, it's called brain death. Government has clarified this. So when a person met with a motor vehicle accident, brain is damaged, they become uh, totally unconscious. Sometimes there can be bleeding inside the brain, then the brain gets damaged. These patients, they are totally into coma and they do not breathe and they, they do not open eyes, they do not respond. Then there are certain criteria as per the government to define brain death. 
So a group of specialists will come and see the patient and do all the tests, see whether the brain can recover or not. If brain doesn't recover in the next 24 to 48 hours, heart will also stop. In such situation, first we declare brain death. Then after six to seven hours, one more team will come and check all the tests, make sure the person is brain dead so that we don't do mistakes. Once the person is declared brain dead following an accident, then a transplant coordinator will discuss the attendance of that patient. See, your person is dead. I know it's a difficult situation. You are going through a lot of trauma. But if that person's organs, some of the organs that are normally working, if they can be donated to other people and uh, deathbed, nearly eight to nine patients can get up from de deathbed. They can lead normal life. Would you like to do that? Some of the donor families come forward to donate the organs. In such situations, if that person's heart is working all right, and I have a patient whose uh, heart is not working, we see where the blood group will match, and then where the body size is approximately okay. In that situation, we bring the patient to the hospital, admit him, then we go to the hospital where there is a brain dead person, and bring that heart. We stop that heart with a special solution. After that, we got about four hours time before that heart can be put into this patient, then it should work within four hours. If there is a lot delay more than four hours, then heart, that heart will also die. So within four hours, we have to bring that heart, remove this patient's heart, we, bring, we put that heart. And the success rate of heart transplantation is very good, more than 75 to 80%. Those people who are on deathbed can get up, walk around, go and do the jobs, take care of their family, and be useful to them as well as to the society, most of these patients. However, it is not an easy procedure. It is a costly procedure. And then there are a lot of problems we have to face. We bring someone else's heart and put in this patient. In that situation, the body think, recognize it is not mine. So it tries to kill it. It is called rejection. So if it rejects, then the heart will stop working, patient will die. This happens with all the transplants, whether it is a kidney, liver, or heart. So we give them some drugs called immunosuppressants. We give three medicines which they need to take lifelong. If the dose of the drugs is less, then the body can reject. But again, if the dose is more to prevent rejection, body immunity will come down and they become more prone for infections. So we have to make a fine balance between infections and rejection by adjusting the dose of the drugs. And patient and the family need to cooperate. The drugs will cost approximately about 30 to 35,000 rupees every month and they need to take lifelong. When you do such a major operation, as a last resort, how long do these people live? That is a commonest question people ask. If you follow them up, that 10-year survival of these patients after heart transplant, that means if you follow 100 people who had heart transplant, we see at the end of the 10 years how many people are alive. More than 65 to 70 people live longer than 10 years. There are patients who are living for 20, 25 years too. Otherwise, these patients would have died in a few days or weeks. Now, living for so many years is not an ordinary thing. It is almost like a second life for these people. If they take these precautions, and they follow with the doctor regularly, these people can lead a normal life too. So for this, of course, once we decide a patient has got a bad heart, we admit them, do the test, make sure that if we do the surgery for this patient, they can live long. For example, someone who is more than say 60, 65 years of age, often they have a lot of problems. They are not fit candidates for a transplant if they are more than 65 years of age. Similarly, someone who has got a multiple problems, a kidney, heart, liver, they all have failed. They are not good candidates. So we have to choose patients carefully. We have to make sure that the surgery is done by a good team in a place where it is recognized by the government. Then the patient and the family need to cooperate. Then, then these people can live very long time. Many a time our people ask, these transplantations are done abroad, not in India. It is not true. We are doing these transplantations. There are patients who are walking around doing very well. So today we have an option for patients who are on deathbed because of damaged heart heart transplantation with which they can recover, lead a nearly normal life.